Alright guys, welcome back to another video. The wind is blowing pretty good, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about uh, toads. Um, fishing toads, or buzzing frogs, people like to call them, but I call them toads. Um, and what they are is, they're a soft, get a little closer, they're a soft frog. Um, this one here is a zoom horny toad. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Um, they're just um, a soft plastic frog with buzzing feet. Um, is most of the time what they are and uh, basically um, for me I'm gonna throw them on the same gear that I'm gonna throw uh, my frogs on a seven foot to a seven foot six um, heavy or extra heavy rod uh, 50 65 pound braid um, and I'm gonna be throwing them in the cover most of the time um, now one thing you can do, like I said, that's how I like to fish them, on heavier gear. One thing you can do, because if you look at them, if you rig it up this way, you can either use a, uh, a swim bait hook, like I have here, or you can use like an EWG hook. And uh, basically, if you look at it like that, it's no different than any other soft plastic. Um, it's the same as a Texas rig, you know, some kind of craw, um, a worm. So you really could drop down and use the same rod you used a Texas rig. Uh, you could drop down and use, you know, a, a medium heavy um, if you wanted with like 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, but that would be for if you're throwing in lighter cover, um, you know, maybe more open water stuff. Um, the other day, actually, I caught caught about a three pounder the other day, and uh, I was actually using a craw. And, but I was swimming it on top like you would with a toad. And you can do that. A lot of people get too, you know, too caught up in, you know, the names of, of whatever. And uh, because it's a craw, you have to throw it on a Texas rig or a jig. Um, but you can take something with a craw, you know, with those arms. And as long as it has a lot of action, you can throw it on top. You can use a worm, uh, different craws, creature baits. And if they have a lot of kicking action, you can throw an EWG hook or a weighted hook. And that weighted hook just lets, you know, just easier to cast. Uh, you just can cast it further. And, uh, and you can use that and reel it on top of the water. That's what I was doing with a craw the other day. I had a little uh, quarter ounce bullet weight in front of it just so I could cast it. Um, and I was just buzzing it across the top. And uh, he came and waked on it. And the nice thing about these um, frogs compared to a, dish, a traditional hollow body frog is these sink. Okay, sometimes that can be bad, sometimes that can be good. But if you stop reeling, it's going to sink. And uh, so what it's gonna do is if a fish blows up on it, right? They come up and they blow up on it and they miss. Um, if you just let that kind of sit there, kind of sink, sometimes those fish will find it. They'll blow up on it and they'll be looking for it and it's gonna slowly, because it's weightless or it has a little bit of weight, it's gonna slowly sink so they're gonna kind of be looking for it and they'll find it when it's sinking. Um, that can also sometimes not be that good. Uh, sometimes they find it better if uh, using a floating frog and they miss it and then they can look and see it and it's sitting on the surface. Sometimes that works better. Um, but a lot of times you can get it. And uh, like what I did yesterday is you don't actually have to pull this directly on top. You can kind of fish it subsurface. So it just kind of makes a little wake under the surface. And that's what I was doing the other day when I caught that fish. Um, that was my last video, about a three pounder or so. Um, that's what I was doing. I was just kind of pulling it right, you know, right under the surface, kind of making it wake. He came up and waked on it. So what I did is I actually slowed it down and let it drop down a little bit and let him eat it. Um, and that's an awesome thing to do. Um, and like a hollow body frog, you really can't do much. You can pause it or you can work it faster, but you can't drop it in front of that fish. Um, if that fish on a day like kind of how it is now, it's still kind of cold. Um, the water is still, you know, a high 50s, 58, 59, maybe low 60s. Um, and they're not fully committed to coming out of the water. Uh, doing that, working something on top, and when you see them come up and wake at it, let it drop down a little bit so when they hit it, they don't have to fully come out of the water. They can just kind of suck it in. They don't have to actually breach the surface to get it. Um, and that's exactly what I did. I was reeling it, throwing it, just reeling it, kind of waking it. And he started waking on it. He came out and waked on it. So I just slowed it down and he came up and grabbed it. 
and uh, it was it was pretty cool. Um, so that is gonna be, you know, your traditional buzzing frog, your soft body frog. Um, it's basically just a soft plastic um, that you're growing across the surface. Um, but nowadays, they have made frogs that are the soft plastic buzzing frogs that float. So this is one right here. Um, this is a, um, a what is this? A uh, why can't I think of the name? Um, oh, Stanley. There you go. This is a Stanley Ribbit uh, top toad. Um, Stanley also has regular toads like this as well that sink. But uh, this is a top toad, and what it is, it's actually kind of a cross between a hollow body frog um, and a and a, uh, a soft frog. So it's soft. It's soft plastic. It tears up like soft plastic, uh, but it actually is hollow. It's pretty thick and it's hollow. Uh, like a hollow body frog so it's kind of a mix but it's still a soft plastic it's not rubber like a hollow body frog it's actually soft plastic and uh, this actually will float but again it's got those kicking legs so i can throw this one out and i can buzz it across i mean, you guys can't see it but i can buzz it across and then i can pause it uh so i can buzz it buzz it buzz it and i get to a piece of cover um or maybe an open spot and a mat open spot and some lily pads and I can pause it and it will float on top of the water and you can also just kind of pop it you don't necessarily have to constantly reel to keep it on top you can just kind of work it with your tip I back up a little bit kind of pop it almost like a popper just kind of get it to kind of jump and those legs will kick a little bit um, but these baits are great when the fish are a little bit more active um, usually this, especially this brand here is going to make a lot more commotion than a bait like this. And that's one thing to look for um, when you're talking about soft, these soft frogs, is um, a lot of them, like the Zoom Horny Toad, it's got really thin, thin little feet, uh, which means that it's not going to have um, a lot of action. You can reel it, um, basically it means you can reel it slower, so you can just barely reel it to keep it and it will stay on top of the water, but it's gonna not kick as much at all. Whereas something, um, like say a Stanley bull ribbit or something with big uh, big kicking feet like that, the big paddles, they're gonna take a lot, you gotta reel it a lot faster to get that kick out of them. Um, and so that can be something you can choose, um, you know, depending on what the fish want. They want something faster, more aggressive, slower, more subtle. Um, you can kind of pick brands. Um, and then, you know, and then these floating ones like this, um, you know it just depends what the fish want you know if that fish if they want if they don't quite want to breach the surface uh, they want something you can drop down and subsurface or if they want something like this where you can work it and it, it stays on the top the whole time no matter how fast you're working it uh, you can really slow it down um, but then if you give it a hard twitch or a, a good you know good little reel it's still got the good kick to it um, so almost like a, it's basically like a floating buzz bait it's what this is, a weedless buzz bait. Um, but these are great frogs. You know, I've talked about hollow body frogs a lot, but I haven't talked about this style of frogs, these soft bodied uh, kicking frogs. And uh, like I said, you don't necessarily have to use frogs. You can use, you know, rage craws. Um, you can use, um, you know, other different stuff. The bio spawn vile craw has a lot of kicking action on top. Um, but because they're not made to be on top, you do sometimes have to reel them a little bit faster uh, to get them to go because they got the bigger claws on them. Um, but these things, they can be awesome. And what I do is I just reel it on top uh, through, and they come through everything. They come through grass, lily pads. One of my favorite frogs is fish through thick lily pads because a hollow body frog, if you're trying to walk it in lily pads, your line, you know, in the tall, thick lily pads, your line can get all wrapped up. These, you can keep your line off of them and just buzz it over the top. Um, and then if you have the kind like this that floats, you can pause it, you know, get to a point and pause it. Um, but these are just awesome, awesome baits. But I work it and I'm reeling, and then say a fish blows up on it, what I like to do is I like to work them with my tip high, or fairly high. Um, maybe not, you know, not like straight up, but it, you know, I like to have a little bit of angle there. And uh, when those fish blow up, I drop my pole down and I reel up my slack. And what that does, it gives time for the fish to grab it. Um, almost like you would like a Texas rig bite. 
Um, and that's basically what, what you're tuning into with these frogs, especially the ones that sink. Um, once they grab it, it's, you tune it into a Texas rig bite where you're like, oh, he's got it, right? I keep my tip up and I'm, oh, he's got it. I reel down to it and then I set the hook. Um, you know, I don't, you don't want to just see the explosion and set the hook right away. Just like a Texas rig bite, when you're working a Texas rig, as soon as you feel a tap, you don't just swing on it. You got to feel them and reel down, you know, make sure he's there. So it's the same thing. Once they blow up on these, just, just pretend it's a, it's a Texas rig bite. Um, to where you have to, uh, you have to, you know, reel down to him and make sure, you know, let him eat it for a second. Make sure he's got it before you set the hook. Um, I'm not one of those guys that likes to count. Some people with top waters will count, especially hollow bodies, but they'd be like, oh, count to three or count to five. Um, I don't do that. I just make sure the fish has got it. Like I said, they blow up on it. I just reel down, make sure he's got it, make sure I feel him on the end of it. You can feel him swimming with it and set the hook. Um, so hopefully this helped you guys out. Uh, I just wanted to do a video on these frogs because they are one of my favorite baits to fish. Um, along with the hollow body frog as well, but um, I just, I love fishing these frogs and I haven't really talked about them a whole lot. And uh, this technique is basically what I just caught that fish on the other day. So I want to talk about it for a second, but thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something. Um, if you like this channel, you like my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and, uh, and hit, hit the like button and make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.